Oh boy. <laughs> I have been avoiding this video for an incredibly long time. I have been quite nervous to film this out of fear that I'm going to get it wrong, out of fear that I'm going to offend people, or even fear of exposing myself and coming across like I don't know what I'm talking about. And that is the question of whether the INFJ personality type are also neurodivergent, meaning autistic or ADHD. I actually see this question come up all of the time on Facebook groups. I see people asking in INFJ Facebook groups if INFJs are autistic and I also surprisingly see it in autistic Facebook groups of people asking the question if autistic people are more likely to be INFJs. And as a counsellor of INFJs, it's not uncommon for me to also provide counselling for those who are autistic or ADHD, do have CPTSD, or are at least exploring the idea of if they are autistic. I do want to make it really clear about my qualifications and training as a counsellor. Within Australia, I am a counsellor, which means I don't have the skills or the qualifications to provide a diagnosis of people. So if someone came to me, I wouldn't be able to diagnose them as autistic or ADHD. With that being said, I am incredibly passionate about working with neurodivergent individuals and I have have done training on neurodiversity affirming therapy. Okay, let's get into it. I'm sure you want to hear if I myself am neurodivergent. Okay, am I autistic? Am I ADHD? Am I autistic and ADHD? Am I neurodivergent? I get asked this question quite a lot actually. And the first time I was asked this was by an Instagram follower who was late diagnosed as being autistic in her late 40s, which, which is becoming increasingly common at the moment because researchers are discovering that the way they looked at autism back in, say, the 90s, they had this very like descriptive way of descri describing what an autistic boy looks like, and it looks very different for girls. And so a lot of women are discovering that they're autistic as they get older because girls are notorious known to be better at masking than neurodivergence in school compared to boys are and they just display their symptoms different or it's a bit more societally accepted. So the first time I was asked I actually felt offended is not the right word but I felt affronted because this was before I had done all of my own research and understanding of autism. Over the years I've had many of my closest friends becoming diagnosed as being autistic or ADHD and I've actually noticed that all of the people that I feel most comfortable with and most myself with are neurodivergent individuals. <laughs> when I read about autism in women and women with ADHD I relate to it so much and I can see that there are many different parts of it that feel like me. But no, I am not diagnosed as being autistic or ADHD. I have thought about going through the process of seeing a psychologist and seeing if I am, but then the other part of me is I, I can't be bothered. <laughs> I just don't have the energy to, or even money to go down that road. And I was talking with a, another neurodivergent, well, I was talking with a neurodivergent colleague about the fact because they want me to be involved in their neuro, their, their community of neurodivergent professionals. And she pointed out to me that I've already set up my life like I'm neurodivergent and have already put strategies in my life to help myself. And so what would a label actually do? I guess for me, a label would mean I could actually say to neurodivergent clients that, hey, I'm neurodivergent. I also feel like I can be very good at masking. The more I work at home, the less I mask. But if I was to go to a GP <laughs> and, you know, mention it, I feel like they probably wouldn't take me seriously. And I think that is quite common for women seeking a diagnosis because they have 
learns how to mask really well when it comes to dealing with professionals such as doctors. It is important to know though that neurodivergence is an umbrella and there's many different things that fit under being neurodivergent. So you have uh, being autistic, ADHD, CPTSD, so trauma, which I have a trauma background and that can look really similar to the symptoms of someone who's autistic. And for a long time, I just figured, well, it's because I've gone through trauma that I relate to the world that I relate to, but that is still under the neurodivergence umbrella. There's other things like BPD that fits under neurodivergence and all of these. I think in terms of being INFJ, there are many similarities of what the INFJ personality looks like to being neurodivergent, such as INFJ burnout, which we talked about in the last video. I feel like that could look really similar to an autistic burnout, as well as that sensory overload that INFJs have. And there is something that I think was quite profound. Someone left a comment on my last video where they said that their ADHD brain often makes checks that their autistic brain cannot keep up with. And I related to that so much and I feel like we're just having a conversation by the way. Don't do not paint me as like giving you the answers here. But we are, when we think about INFJs, we talk about the the conflict of being an INFJ and how on one hand we can be like this but on the other hand we can be like that. Or how INFJs can be like chameleons and adapt and mold themselves to the world that they're currently in and the setting that they're in. And so it makes me think are INFJs ADHD and autistic? And is that why there is such like polar opposites? Okay, as you all know, I don't like to pretend that I am the expert of you as an INFJ. INFJs know themselves so well, you're highly intuitive, you know yourself best. And so in this environment on YouTube, I prefer to have a conversation with you. And so I actually went on an INFJ Facebook group and asked the question on whether they think there is a link between INFJs and neurodivergence, as in being autistic or, or and ADHD. And I want to share with you some of their responses because I think it's really important that we hear from the wider community. Someone said, there's a lot of overlap between childhood trauma and autism. They can look almost identical. I know a lot of us are traumatized. I have an ADHD and autism diagnosis, but after learning more about our kind, I actually don't believe it anymore. Someone else wrote, I would never have been diagnosable as having autism or ADHD. They would have to drastically alter the criteria, although I definitely have related to cognitive dissonance, I can't say the word, issues in the past. I have synthesia, some sensory issues and have healed quite a bit from PTSD, but that is all. And like I said, CPTSD actually fits under the neurodivergence umbrella. I'm 99% sure I personally am autistic and just figured that out in my late 30s. I don't know about everyone else. I have always believed that I was higher on the spectrum than the norm, but I was diagnosed with CPTSD. Childhood trauma that continued on through a 25 year marriage. I am not sure if it is autism or trauma. I would like to point out that research actually shows that those who are autistic are actually more successful, more likely to then experience trauma in their lives. And so that is a question that does come up. Is it trauma or is it being autistic? Or maybe it's both. I've got ADHD as well. I show a lot of autistic signs, but the women ones that most don't notice or were dismissed back in my day. I don't have ASD, but HSP, AKA sensory processing sensitivity, falls under the neurodivergence umbrella. Most INFJs are HSPs. I believe around 90% the last time I checked. So most of us could fall under the category of neurodivergence. It would be interesting how that manifests for the ones that do have ASD. Introversion alone comes along with more sensitivity in terms of senses. If you've heard of the famous lemon tasting test, being an introvert and HSP and having ASD, I imagine that would be potentially overwhelming or challenging. This was actually written by Jamie, who is part of our community here. And I would love for you, Jamie, to tell us more about this lemon tasting test. 
Okay, this is an important one to note. What I'm about to read, I think, is an important comment for you to uh, hear. It's a really long comment, so I might not read all of it out, but I will share it on a screenshot. I have major issues with making these types of correlations based on the personality type I fall under, or any type for that matter. I find extremely minimizing to my life experiences and dismissive of others. In my family, both nuclear and extensive, I have the following. Bipolar, CPTSD, schizophrenia, neurotypical, autism, PTSD, high sensitivity, high intelligence, ranging from above average to crazy genius, and all sorts of other diagnoses. It's a mix of introverts and extroverts. With all of that, there is probably only two of us that would test as being INFJ. That being myself and my dad. The rest is a mix of personalities on the MBTI scale. Correlation links like this is a slippery slope that leads to assumption and to false labeling. No different than when they mislabeled me bipolar based on family history and not on fact. And yeah, it's a really long one. As far as being neurodivergent, because I am highly sensitive, I don't agree. Personally, I believe for me, it is a trauma response and there are times that sensitivity is triggered and more active at other times, it is quieter. I don't consider it being neuro neurodivergent simply because it is normal in people who have had trauma and just about everybody has and the majority of them are highly sensitive to something. But keeping in mind that CPTSD falls under the neurodivergent umbrella. Truly, without lifelong studies on varying levels for each diagnosis and cross studies on all other personalities, there is no scientific fact and shouldn't be presented as such. It just leads to false, belief, uh, false labels, which I agree with. Oh, there are so many comments. There will be overlaps, clearly. INFJ is sometimes referred to as a trauma personality itself, and there is definitely some truth behind that. As INFJs, we want to comprehend everything in life, including our complicated selves, by using pattern. Preferably, we try to find a single pattern to explain everything, but there is so chance to put the different labels together into one. Like INFJ equals fearful avoidant attachment equals high functioning autism equals high sensitivity equals CPTSD. I myself identify myself with all of the above, but they all operate by different distinctions. Thus, there will never be full accuracy in trying to find out which one merges with another. I am 46 and recently diagnosed ADHD and high IQ, which may counter for a lot of the I do not belong here thinking. No autism though. The correlations are intriguing. Yes. Okay, my final thoughts, what do I think? Anecdotally, I've seen a lot of evidence between the link of being an INFJ and autism, ADHD and trauma. But that could also be because the people who seek cancelling are trying to heal from trauma or understand themselves better after becoming diagnosed as being neurodivergent. I think we need to be cautious about what we read and watch on the internet. Now, I know that there have been quite a few YouTube videos and articles about the link between INFJs and autism and ADHD, but I don't think we can definitively, I'm not great at words, I don't think we can completely say, yes, there's a link until there is proper research that has been done in an academic setting. But I do think that perhaps this is a pathway for people to understand themselves more and to potentially open up to the idea that perhaps they are neurodivergent and to explore that within themselves. Some INFJs can be autistic, but autistic people can also have all different personality types. I mentioned that in an autistic Facebook group that I'm a part of, the question was asked about, you know, if INFJs are autistic, and there was a, an array of comments that said, no, I'm INFJ, or I'm ENFP, I mean, <laughs> no, I'm INFP, I'm ISTJ, or I'm an extrovert, or whatever, and so perhaps there's a higher correlation of INFJs being autistic, but I just don't think we can say that one is the other and perhaps it's that there's more of a discussion about this because INFJs are highly introspective and so we like to look at ourselves more and reflect and have these deeper conversations and so maybe that's why there's a surge in conversation between INFJs and neurodivergence but at the end of the day whether you're INFJ, autistic, ADHD, 
CPTSD, whatever it is, we need to come to a place of self-acceptance of who we are. And if that means having a label is going to help you to do that, then I don't see the problem in that. If it helps you to understand yourself more and the way you tick and the way you think and the way you live and you can set your life up so that you can thrive and be the best version of who you are, then that's amazing. If it means you can find the tools and the strategies to be your happiest self, then I think go for it. I don't think there's a problem in having these conversations and labeling ourselves in certain ways if at the end of the day it's going to help you to know who you are more. I have so many more thoughts about this topic, but I want to hear more from you. I want to hear what you think. I want to know if you've been diagnosed as autistic or ADHD or if you think you, you have it. If you're like me where you just don't have the energy to actually pursue that or whatever, please let me know in the comments. Let's talk about this more. As I said, your thoughts and opinions mean so much more to me than me telling you how to live your life because your life is your life.